Hello, I'm Paul Peterson, your host for Aging Well in L.A. Today we have a most interesting show for you, a program about your potential benefits after the Supreme Court's 2013 decision on the Defense of Marriage Act, or DOMA. If you are involved in a same-sex marriage or domestic partnership, today's show is very important television. So please stay tuned. Welcome back to Aging Well in L.A. Today we are visiting the Los Angeles Gay and Lesbian Center in Hollywood to discuss the ramifications of the recent Supreme Court decision that significantly altered federal law, especially as it applies to gay and lesbian couples, married or not. The Social Security Administration is primarily responsible to see that all Americans receive the benefits to which they are entitled and which they've paid for over their working life. Today's show is about fairness and justice for all. As we get older, issues like pension and health and how those benefits are dispensed after we've passed on become more and more important. Step inside with me to meet some very interesting and committed people. Well, we are now inside the LGBT Center here in Hollywood, and I want to introduce you to three very important people to the operation of the Center. First, Kathleen Sullivan, who is the Director of Senior Services here, correct? That's right. That's right. That's right. And then we have Jerry McIntyre, who is from the National Senior Center... Na it's such a hard title. National Senior Citizens Law Center. Senior Citizens Law Center. Correct. All right. And last but not least, Alan Acosta, and I'm going to get you right, I know, who is the Director of Strategic Initiatives here. That's right. That's fabulous. Now, right. Kathleen, let me start with you. Sure. Um, this is a tremendous resource for the community, uh, but seniors uh, have some special issues. Can you tell us how you can help seniors who are in this LGBT community uh, secure the benefits that they've already paid for? Sure. Well, you know, I love that you said that they already paid for them, <laughs> because they certainly did. Yes. We um, have about 3,000 LGBT senior clients mm -hmm. um, at the LA Gay and Lesbian Center. And after the Windsor decision last June, yes. a lot of benefits were really opened up for people. Wow. And that is going to make a huge difference in people's lives. It's going to mean Social Security benefits, pension benefits. People mm -hmm. are going to be able to apply for those and actually get them. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's a good thing. We, folks seldom understand that many of our seniors are living right on the edge of poverty, and denying them benefits can put them in a very pre precarious position. Absolutely. You know, uh, about 20% of the people we work with live on less than $1,000 each oh, month. It's just not possible, a thousand a month. It doesn't seem possible it to doesn't. live on that no. little. But what's exacerbated the problem is that even if they were in a relationship for 30, 40, 50 years, yes. because their marriages weren't recognized, they didn't receive the Social Security survivor benefits. Right. And so once that partner passes, unfortunately, um, the other partners left with a lot less income each yeah. month. And it's really thrown a lot of our clients into poverty. Well, I'm sure it has. Uh, Jerry, let me ask you, the, the Supreme Court decision was just a year old as we uh, interviewed today. Uh, how, has the, how has the ruling affected your work and, and securing benefits for seniors? Well, it's been a slow process uh, really? to see the uh, Social Security Administration implement this because it's, it's, it's a fairly complex uh, task. Um, but they are now uh, pro uh, processing uh, applications for spousal benefits and survivor benefits based on same-sex marriage here in California, mm -hmm. or at least most of them. There are some that are not, but they are, uh, they are processing the, ma the majority of them. At I this see. Point. Now, with so many same-sex couples uh, have both been in the workforce. How does that work when there have been two incomes? Well, it depends. It, where the spousal benefit helps is where there's a big difference between the uh, lifetime earnings of one spouse and the other. 
And if you have one who has very low, relatively low lifetime earnings, um, that is uh, very important because it, they're entitled to an amount equal to one half the benefit of the higher earning spouse, Perfect. whichever is higher, half, yeah. the, half the benefit of the higher earning spouse or the benefit they would get on their own record. And so this is one of the, uh, as, as Kathleen was saying, this is really a very important anti-poverty measure. Right. And the other uh, anti-poverty measure, which is even more important, is the survivor benefit. Right. When one dies, um, if, the, if the higher earning spouse dies first, the one with the higher Social Security benefit dies first, then uh, as long as they've been, you know, married for uh, for a year, they they would be able to, uh, to the the lower earning spouse would be able to get a benefit equal, a social security check equal to the amount that the higher earning spouse would right. get. And that's very important. People forget we're living a long time these days. Well, Question it's important to be able to maintain your home, sure. to be able to uh, really have to be able to continue living as you did rather than have to sell everything you now, own. Now, Alan, as a director of special projects or special initiatives, this has put quite a burden on you because there are a lot of things that need to be settled here. Housing, uh, uh, taking care of children, um, senior care. How is this going to work for the children of same-sex couples and, and um, things like medical coverage or pensions more specifically? Well, so the same way I think Jerry could probably talk more about this, mm -hmm. but if uh, a child is, is uh, eligible for certain Social Security benefits and if you can't be married and if you, or if, you, if there's a law against them, uh, right. couples receiving the same benefits, that child would not be necessarily get those same benefits. How are we going to get this word out? You know, with a, as a father of a gay son uh, who's in his late 30s, uh, I'm after him already. Start thinking ahead here. We, we, you've got to make some significant plans and declare yourself so that the benefits you're paying for are available to you. Well, so organizations like ours, we're out yeah. there spreading the word. Yes, and, indeed. Uh, and Jerry's Jerry's organization a great job also is spreading well. the word because um, it, it, a lot has happened in three or four years in yes. our country around these issues. So a lot of people are not really thinking about this because five years ago it was almost impossible to imagine that these benefits would be available. Right, you know. of course. So, so a lot of it now is that sort of is getting out to the public. Uh, Kathleen does this a lot. We mm -hmm. do it in all of our programs. Now we have, we have uh, public forums here and panels about these kinds of things. So. Right, and it's, it's very important. Now another group that I care about, and Kathleen, I want your, uh, to, you to speak on this, is our disabled, our, our, mm -hmm. our disabled seniors. Because with age comes some infirmity sometimes, and that can be very complex. Well, it is complex, and unfortunately, many of the seniors we provide services to sometimes don't feel comfortable going to traditional senior centers. Mm, of course. So that is another issue that we're working with the Department mm. of Aging in Los Angeles mm. to make sure that everybody has the right training. Right. So we know how to make safe space for all of our seniors, mm -hmm. but certainly for our seniors that have disabilities, uh, we work with a lot of men who are long-term survivors of HIV. Sure. And, you know, there are just some things that we need to provide to those folks uh, to make sure that they are accessing the benefits that they need so they can live the most healthy life that they can. Well, I know within the senior <coughs> community so often, uh, it, it, with same-sex relationships, uh, there's really no family, no blood family. Yeah. They, have, they may be alienated from their family, which, uh, let me tell you, is a bad idea to alienate yourself from gay children. Uh, it, it, it's, it's hard. It's almost as if a person doesn't have a backup, a blood relation. Boy, that is really, that's so insightful. Mm. Um, you know, in our community, we often say that we create our families. Yes, yes. And some people have wonderful fathers like you, uh. but a lot of people don't. And certainly a lot of our older folks, mm -hmm. um, their families have really been estranged from them for quite some time. Yes. And that's why we really see a variety of different support systems coming into mm -hmm. play and a lot of caregiving of close friends um, or, you know, families of choice. Mm. So family is a huge issue in the LGBT community sure. and certainly a lot of same-sex couples are having kids now. Uh, say, uh, now more than ever, well, yeah. Well, so, so that's that something that's coming up. Actually a problem before because yeah. <laughs> um, gay and lesbian people, partially because of discrimination, are much less likely to have children who become the caretaker for many heterosexual 
adults, right? right? Because you take care of your parent. But we are, as a community right now, and hopefully not in the future, much less likely to have children who can do that well, for us. Now there's lots more to cover on this interesting topic, so stay tuned. Hello, I'm Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti, and I want to tell you about some important changes to Social Security and Medicare benefits that might affect you. If you're an LGBT senior, Social Security may owe you money. Since the Supreme Court's landmark same-sex marriage ruling in June 2013, LGBT married couples may qualify for increased benefits under Social Security. These benefits relate to spousal benefits, disability benefits, family and children's benefits, and SSI. If you are married, thinking of getting married, and are 62 and above or approaching that age, don't leave your money on the table. This is money you've paid into the system. To learn more, contact the City of Los Angeles Department of Aging at 1-800-510-2020 or call 311 and they can connect you. It's easy to do and we can help. Remember, it's your money. Thank you. Next, I'd like to introduce you to two very nice ladies who have joined us today. First, Andy Siegel, seated on my left, and next to her, Alice Herman. Welcome to you both. Thank now, you. your personal stories are kind of an example of how life doesn't treat us fairly. Andy, you lost your partner after how many years? 36 years. 36 years together. She passed away in 2005. <laughs> and. Uh, I had a critical accident in 94 and uh, but importantly you weren't eligible for any of her accrued benefits were you I was not nor was I el eligible for my retirement mm -hmm. that uh, too because I didn't work 25 years I wasn't able to go back to work because I was critically injured you were formally married as well correct yes we were yes here in California yes the Reverend Troy Perry uh -huh. married us in 1969. Right. 25 years later, we renewed our vows. Oh, that's sweet. That's and, great. Uh, with Reverend Troy Perry. Yeah. And uh, it's difficult to lose a partner. And, Nothing prepares yes. us for it. She was my life. Yeah, I understand. Did she help you raise your your child? Yes. Of course. Dean had two mommies. <laughs> uh, two mommies. That's cool. Yeah. And Alice, you yeah. you were with your partner for more than 40 years. 45 years. 45 years. Oh, 45 years. That's a good long time. Yeah. And, and her death put you in a tough spot too, didn't it? Um, when she died, uh, she had been in the hospital for almost two years wow. as a result of a surgery that had gone bad. And uh, over that period of time, uh, Medicare pays for 80%. Uh, oh. So we'll let it go with that. <laughs> the other, by the time uh, Sylvia died, she died um, March 21st, 2009. Uh, I had enough money left for two months' rent. Oh my gosh. And it was like, okay, what do I do now? And all I had left were the two little cats that she had decided to adopt when we couldn't walk dogs anymore. Right. And there was no way I was going to leave them behind. Uh, so I needed a place that was going to be affordable and safe and would take the two cats. And you found Triangle? Uh, I found a place put up by gay and lesbian elder housing called Triangle Square. Right. And uh, thank you, God. They liked me. They liked the cats. They took us in because all I knew at the time was how to cry. Uh -oh. uh, I had no money. I had no idea uh, that Doma would, in my lifetime, ever be repealed. And a year ago, it was a year ago. A year ago, June. Back, right, a year yes. ago, June. Uh, they repealed Dumbo. I said, thank you, God. Yeah. Other people won't have to go through what I went through. No, and, and it's about time. Well, we could talk for an awful long time, but uh, we'll be right back. I have other people I want you to meet. Now I'd like you to meet two new women friends of mine. First on my left, we have Sharon Raphael. Sharon, welcome. And to her left is Mina Meyer. Welcome to you both. You guys have been together how long? 43 years in August. Oh my, oh my. That's, that's quite a lengthy yeah. relationship. Yes. Uh, but these, uh, you've had to fight for benefits pretty much all during your relationship, correct? 
Yeah, we were. We, the first thing we had to pay for was health care. Health care, of course. Yeah, yes. we didn't. Have, that was the most worrisome because mine had a lot of health issues. I got you. And so, you know, I, I felt a big responsibility because sure. I was the primary breadwinner. I understand. Yes, yeah. and and that's one of the issues with Social Security is who, when you have a relationship, one person is almost always primary, and if they deny you benefits, that can really put people in a pickle. It can. Yeah. Now, Miney, you you uh, you are a brave person. You took on Social Security and went after them before the Supreme Court decision. Yes. So, uh, tell us a little bit about that story. I'd love to hear it. I ran into Jerry McIntyre at some American Society on Aging meetings, and he started talking to us about um, spousal benefits. And he said, "You really ought to." Um, apply for them sure and uh, well, it makes sense <laughs> and uh, I he, I didn't even know anything about it so he explained it to me as an attorney we thought about it for a few months mm -hmm. and um, and then um, in the December before the DOMA decision right we decided to go ahead and do it and what happened right away so I got a turn down within 24 hours mm -hmm. came in the mail they I mean they didn't even have to think about it. They turned it down, and uh, so on the bottom of the letter it says, you know, you have 60 days to to appeal this. Right. Well, I turned right around. I didn't wait 60 days. Good for and, you. And and I appealed. The reason for my appeal, I said, was I felt it was unconstitutional, and um, that was the only excuse I had. Right. And and. Uh, so they put it in a pending folder, yes. and they were going to wait for the decision. Of course. So it just sat there from, by now it was January, it sat there from January till June, till the Supreme Court made their decision. And in June, I called them, and uh, actually I think I waited till July, because I figured it would take some time for yes. it to go through. Right. And um, I said, now that the decision's come along, am I going to get some money one of these days? And uh, and they said, oh yes, you will. It's coming. Oh, Thank I think you. people are are thinking too um, narrowly about this whole thing because the focus is only on couples, and there are a lot of gay people who are s single. Yes. And their needs are not being taken care of, and there are a lot of places where you can't even have hold a job and be gay, and so. You know, yes, we have marriage equality now in some states, and there's still, st you know, places where they're fighting against that. Sure, absolutely. Right. And I think that, and in terms of the health care, uh, you know, it should be for everyone. Of course. You know? We're and, talking and about fairness. And, of course, fairness. Obamacare does make it um, fa fairer than it was right. before. And but there's still, you know, an awful lot of people who are left out. Sure. And I don't think we should become so obsessed with the marriage thing. I mean, there are people who don't necessarily want to be married, yes. and um, yeah. but, but you, they're still dependent on each other. I want to thank both of you for taking the time to visit with us today. It's just, it's wonderful to see you and keep thank up the you. good fight. Thank, thank you, you thank very much. much. Thank you. We're visiting again with Jerry McIntyre, and I had no idea about the denial of pension benefits and, and health care coverage. And, and then you mentioned something that I had never even considered. What about the children of aging uh, couples, gay couples, who have been supporting their parents? That's a tremendous financial burden. Right, right. And, and at least one of the advantages of the, of the Windsor decision is that it would relieve some of that burden on, on these children um, by providing a spousal benefit, for right. example, or if, or if the uh, higher earning spouse is, is deceased by providing uh, a, uh, a survivor benefit. So that, that's a very important, uh, it, it's important not just for that couple, but really for the entire family. Well, I, uh, you so. can see it, this has mm -hmm. ripples throughout the, the, the society without question. And the other, the <laughs> other thing that, for, for, that it also, uh, this gets more complicated, I don't want to really go into it here, but it, it also does have implications in some instances for Medicare as well. So. 
It's, so it's important for people to file, right? To find out if they're eligible for benefits and then, gosh darn it, get yes, in line. Yes, if you think you are, uh, if you think you may be eligible, mm -hmm. then you should file for benefits. There is no downside to filing if you think you may be eligible. Mm -hmm. Obviously, check the basic eligibility sure. requirements first. You know, you have if you have to be uh, one one party has to be uh, uh, eligible for a spousal benefit, right. um, and then the other one uh, has to be um, you know at least 60 years old. Right. Um, but uh, if you think you may be eligible, you should file, uh, and uh, you'll get because every month you delay, that's one less month right. of benefits. And, and of course, the resources are here at the LGBT Center, the Lesbian and Gay Center. If you think you might be eligible, get in contact with them. These people are here yes. to help and uh, they'd like to share this information. And this isn't just specific to, to gay couples. This is really for anybody who is eligible for, for benefits they've paid for. Yes, although I think that for heterosexual couples, usually um, this works much uh, much more easily mm -hmm. because it's all uh, the Social Security Administration has traditionally asked for the information on marriage when somebody goes in to apply right. for a retirement benefit uh, or even if you're going in earlier for a disability benefit they mm -hmm. ask about your your uh, your marriage so they have a record of, of people being married they it, 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 it they really don't they are told what they would be able to get Whereas be, uh, with, with uh, same-sex couples, I mean, they will be told in the future, but there are many people who have already started receiving retirement benefits, and th this was not considered an appropriate question to ask oh at the time that they applied. Of course. So they didn't get the sort of assistance that we, uh, we normally would expect from the Social right. Security Administration. And the Social Security Administration, by the way, does do a good job usually on that, mm -hmm. but it wasn't done for people in same-sex relationships uh, because of the of, of DOMA. This has impact on, uh, on SSI and disability. Yeah, also. well, SSI, uh, which people can receive either on the basis of disability or age, if they're very low income, um, it has an imp it has a there's a, an impact there in that if you are married then they have to look at income and resources of the couple of the okay couple. right uh, and not just the individual and right now we are seeing some SSI cases uh, here in California and many more across the country that are on hold they take the application and they are not processing them even though these people are really in, in the most serious need because yes. they all have e extremely low incomes and no resources to fall back on. Um, and this is something which we think is improper. And uh, if, if you see this type of situation, people should uh, you know, contact the LA Gay and Lesbian Center here. They can, they can help to, uh, uh, you know, uh, to, to uh, help, you, help you out on this. The, this is not just, they're, they're holding these applications, not just for people in same-sex marriages, uh, but also for all people in domestic partnerships, uh -huh. same-sex domestic partnerships, same-sex civil unions. Uh, that so. that's involves so many people who just don't get around to getting married, and then they don't understand that the property rights issues are, are on the yeah. table and benefits. So, look, the important thing, contact people here at the Gay and Lesbian Center, easy to do. Uh, get the information to see if you're eligible, and if you are, get in line, file. Thank you. Joining us today is Grace Kim, who is a regional commissioner for the Social Security Administration. She handles three western states, California, Nevada, Arizona, plus Hawaii and the far Pacific. Thank you, Paul. It's a pleasure to be here, and I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to be a part of your show. Commissioner Kim, can you tell me uh, what are the most important changes uh, to DOMA here in California? As you know, the Supreme Court recently decided the Windsor case. The Supreme Court struck down a section of DOMA that defines marriage between a man and a woman. For many years, that definition applied to anyone seeking benefits from federal agencies, including the Social Security Administration. 
I am pleased to say that we are now working with the Department of Justice to implement the court's decision and how it affects entitlement to Social Security benefits. Over the last few months, I have participated in several LGBT outreach activities, including three town hall meetings here in the Los Angeles area, as well as in San Francisco. The purpose of these meetings was to educate members of the LGBT community about how the Windsor decision affects them and their families if they are seeking benefits from the Social Security Administration. I am happy to say that we are now processing some retirement, surviving spouse, and lump sum death payment claims for same-sex couples. We are also considering same-sex marriages when processing some claims for supplemental security income or SSI. For those of you not familiar with this program, SSI is a needs-based program that pays benefits to blind or disabled adults and children, as well as individuals aged 65 and older who have limited income and resources. All marriages, including same-sex marriages, may affect SSI eligibility and payment amount for current SSI recipients. So it's very important to notify Social Security if you get married, separated or divorced. It is also important to note that while the Windsor decision may change how SSA defines a marital relationship, the other application requirements remain the same. SSA's implementation of the Windsor decision is ongoing. SSA is working closely with the Department of Justice to develop additional policy and processing instructions for all of SSA's programs. As I mentioned earlier, SSA is processing some claims based on same-sex marriages, but not all claims. If we are currently unable to process a certain type of claim right now, we will hold it and process it as soon as additional instructions are finalized. What should a person do if they think they're eligible for increased benefits? We have several new ways for the LGBT community to find out what's new at our agency. With respect to the latest Windsor-related developments, you can find that information on our website at www.socialsecurity.gov. Click on the link, Need Information About the Defense of Marriage Act, located at the bottom of the homepage. We are continually updating our website. Folks can also sign up to receive free emails and text messages to keep them informed on the latest Windsor updates. I invite the LGBT community to follow us on Twitter or friend us on Facebook as well. Thank you again, Paul, for having me on your program today. My name is Kathleen Sullivan. I'm the Director of Senior Services at the Los Angeles LGBT Center. Welcome to Caregiver's Corner. Many of us have been caregivers for a parent. I was my mother's caregiver in her final years of life. In the LGBT's community, we actually see a higher rate of caregiving than in the general population. Most of it's provided by friends or friendship networks or partners. One thing that LGBT seniors need is the support of their community, particularly in applying for the benefits that they deserve and they've paid into. We've seen time and time again that some seniors don't have the courage to walk into the Social Security Administration or walk into the VA to get the benefits that they deserve. That's where the Los Angeles LGBT Center comes in. We provide counseling, case management, and connect people to providers of services who are LGBT friendly and supportive. If you know an LGBT senior that needs that type of support, please give us a call at area code 323 860 5830. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed today's show and learned as much as I did about the particular issues surrounding our LGBT community. As always, the Los Angeles Department of Aging is there to help you deal with the many issues surrounding the large and growing senior community. Thanks for watching. I'm Paul Peterson saying, see you next time on Aging Well in LA.